the information I'm about to share with you in the next few videos I find really important, so pay as much attention as you possibly can at this hour. I want to spend some time on explaining how to work with color in Illustrator. Not only how to apply color, but also how to choose it right for your next project. Okay, first I want you to look at these two big squares. These are your primary color handlers. They represent the fill and the stroke color that are currently in use. But what exactly are the fill and stroke? Well, the stroke is sort of a border that goes around an object, and the fill is something that is within this border. Take this logo, for example. It's a logo of a fictitious company I called Urban Apparel. I mixed two shapes here, a top hat and a skyscraper. Well, some of you might say it's a bit hipster, I get it, well, maybe a bit, but I think it's nice. As you can see, right now it has the pale brown color for fill and plain old black for stroke. Say, I don't like it, and I want to change it. And at the same time, I really want to use this option right here. So, how would I do that? Quick aside note here, guys. It would be fantastic if you decided to learn some basic shortcuts so early in this course and I promise you, you'll be using them a lot and they will make your work with this software so much easier. First of all, the quickest way to move between the fill and the stroke color is the letter X on your keyboard. Pressing it repeatedly will create a toggle between fill and stroke color like so. Shift X allows us to exchange fill color with the stroke color. I am instantly reversing the colors. In this case, I can quickly make the fill black and the stroke pale brown. Alternatively, you can click these little arrows right here to exchange fill color with the stroke color. If you want to go back to the default fill and stroke color, which is white for fill and black for stroke, simply press the letter D on your keyboard. You know, D for default. Now we got the white fill and the black stroke. I'll undo that by pressing Ctrl Z. But how to actually choose and apply color, you might ask? Well, simply double click one of these squares to get the color picker. I'll double click on the fill color and now I'm able to change it to say, well, maybe this dark blue color. Now I want to change the stroke color. So, double click on the stroke, and now I'll choose, well, maybe this pale green color, and I'll click OK. So, this is the original, and these are the changes we made. But to tell you the truth, I think that in this case the fill and the stroke color should be the same, and I think I prefer the green color. So, what I can do is to simply double click on the stroke, and down here see this hashtag? This actually indicates an RGB color name, but this is more about the technique right now rather than color modes. Well, Illustrator is helpful enough to make this value highlighted so it's ready to be copied. Well, thanks Illustrator! I will copy it. I'll use the Ctrl C combination on my keyboard, and now if I cancel from this dialog box, switch back to the fill color, I can just simply paste the copied value using the combination of Ctrl V and hit OK. I'll have exactly the same fill and stroke color. Now, is that cool or what? You know, I also think that these letters down here that make the word urban it should be the same color as the hat. So we could of course go to the fill color and paste the color value we copied a couple of seconds ago, but I'll show you a different way to do that just to you know, expand your technique portfolio. I'll go to my eyedropper tool, which has a very handy shortcut, which is the letter I, and while having my letters selected, I'll sample the head by simply clicking on it. As you can see, eyedropper picked up the fill color, but also the stroke color, and I don't want any stroke to the letters, so I'll simply hit the slash key to get rid of it, just like so. There are, of course, other ways of changing the colors of an object in Illustrator, and what kind of a teacher would I be if I didn't show them to you? 
Well, surely a bad one. So let's explore this subject a bit more starting in the next video.